Our story begins long ago, in a time when chivalry reigned supreme across the lands. It was a simpler time, a time when men did naught but manly things, while women stayed mostly at home, as God no doubt intended. It was in this age that our hero emerged from obscurity and made his mark upon the earth. His name was Masculus, and he revealed himself to be a righteous man of noble deeds, blessed with an enormous endowment. It's unknown whether he was a god amongst mortals, or merely a blessed man of freakishly good genetics. Perhaps he was a bit of each. But make no mistake, for he was a legend. Women adored him, and men wished to be him. Indeed, all that came across him could not help but respect him, for he embodied the pinnacle of what it means to be a man. Prepare yourselves for true greatness and enlightenment. Prepare yourselves for high adventure like never before. For these are the tales of the greatest hero of all time. These are the tales of Masculus. Large portions of this performance contain mature language and themes. Listener discretion is advised. This is the Tales of Masculus and the Brotherhood of Righteous Nobility. Chapter 1 The Noblest of Deeds. Out in the countryside, Masculus met once more with the young maiden Rayleigh Desprato. A lady of the court, Miss Desprato had fancied Masculus for many moons before fate would bring them together on this night. Within the dwellings of her father's country manor, whilst he was out for a two-day hunt, Masculus serenaded the fair maiden with passionate music from distant lands. <laughs> As the fireplace crackled softly behind them, warming their backs, Masculus's manly gaze warmed young Rayleigh's heart, and a stirring began deep within her, awakening feelings of anticipation she had never felt before. As they sipped upon wine into the late hours of the night, Masculus regaled Rayleigh of his time spent traversing the countryside by horseback, sailing across the seas, and other fine manly deeds that women love to hear of. Oh, Masculus, I love being with you so much. I hope we can spend nights like these together for all our years to come. Desperato told him, daring to yearn for his feelings to mirror her own. My sweet Rayleigh, this night has been one that I truly cherish, of that I am certain. He replied, Oh, Masculus! She feigned in delight. I love you too! At daybreak, we should ride out to meet my father and ask for his- Sweet Rayleigh! Masculus pressed a firm finger to the naive maiden's soft lips, putting an abrupt halt to her inane blather. Let us not spoil this moment with talk of the morrow, when the now is so ripe to savor, for it would be but a sin to squander this precious time we have before us. Masculus set his drink down beside him and leaned back in his chair. Come hither, my dear, seat yourself upon mine throne, and I shall bestow within you the pleasures that await betwixt your thighs. As soon as the words left his lips, her body obeyed like that of a dog to its master. She was wholly his in that time, freely submitting to his bidding, knowing no greater pleasure than to be in his presence, engulfed in his embrace, mounted upon his magnificent manhood. 
so full was her heart from that moment. If he had won a tournament in her honor, if he had gifted her riches beyond her wildest dreams, if he had rescued her from a curse with true love's kiss, he could not have bound her more wholly to him. For Masculus had delivered so glorious a blessing unto her. A soft rain fell from the heavens above, as even the gods themselves wept of sheer astonishment. It was then that Rayleigh would leave her maidenhood behind, blossoming into a woman that very night. After many hours of passionate ecstasy that Masculus selflessly lavished upon her, Rayleigh slipped into a slumber so deep and peaceful, the likes of which she had never known. <laughs> Upon waking in the morning's light, Rayleigh turned to find Masculus by her side, but alas, he was gone. Saddened and aghast with desire for her new love's touch, she nearly cried out in anguish, but just at that very moment, the memory of how fantastically Masculus had ravished and pummeled her filled her mind, and sensations of nostalgic bliss washed over her body like a wave across the sea. Later that day, when Rayleigh's senses had returned to her control, she rushed to check the stables where Masculus had kept his stallion, but found herself unable to stand, let alone walk. Unknowing of what else to do, she turned to her nightstand, grabbed a quill, and inked out her heart's most deepest desires. Dearest Masculus, you doth have my heart, my love, for now and for all my days to come, for you have earned it rightfully and deservedly so. Your wise, caring words melted the gloom and despair my mind had come to know too well. Your strong yet tender touch was the key that freed my body from the prison it had been locked inside of. Now I grasp what it truly means to be a woman, as you alone have shown me with your loving patience and thorough guidance. Thank you for all you have given me, my love. Be assured that no other man could ever take the place you now hold within my heart. Though the mere thought of waiting to see you is nearly unbearable, I shall content myself with the memory of our divine union. Know that I eagerly await your return, staying faithful until that day, no matter how long. Always and forever yours, Ray Lee Desprato. That's it for this installment of The Tales of Masculus. Tune in next time to discover what adventures lie ahead. Will we learn where Masculus disappeared to? Will he receive the former maiden's letter? Will he return to bed, young Rayleigh, before her next moon's blood is upon her? All that and much, much more when we return with The Tales of Masculus. Large portions of this performance contain mature language and themes. Listener discretion is advised. This is the Tales of Masculus and the Brotherhood of Righteous Nobility. Chapter 2 Wisdom from On High. Later that night, after a long day of riding, Masculus arrived at the Old Cock Inn, the local tavern of choice for him and his most trusted brothers, who patiently awaited his return. Upon his entrance, they were eager to hear of his most recent exploits. Tell us, Masculus! They begged of him. 
A true gentleman never boasts nor seeks praise from others. Whilst sober, Masculus reminded them. Well then let's drink! Yeah, drink. 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 drink! And so they drank until much had been drank by all, and Masculus was well emboldened by his cups. No longer burdened by decorum or adherence to moral civility, he recounted his time at Desprato's Manor at length, detailing out the fairness of the former maiden's beauty, the fantastically tight, moist flowers she possessed, and the details of how she moaned and convulsed as he blossomed it. His brothers were no strangers to women themselves. As ever, they pressed Masculus to tell them more. What of her northern hills and her southern slopes? Does she care for them? Did you care for them? Asked Sir Oliver Closeoff, ever interested in the natural female form. Sir Closeoff desires nothing more than to feel a cool breeze round his balls, whilst surrounded by bare-skinned beauties to lick upon them. I most certainly did, Sir Closeoff. Dare say I cared for them very much. The hair on her muff kept short, yet soft as silk, and just long enough to grab with mine teeth. Masculus indulged Sir Closeoff, jutting his teeth out to show just how he'd done it. Her lady lips pink as a rose, neatly tucked yet supple to caress. Her bosom's well perked, near a full hand of firmness when grasped did I, and matching rosen teats to that of her rosen bits below. Wonderful! Thank you, dear Masculus! Sir Closeoff replied, now lost in his mind's eye, staring upon his imaginings of the undressed damsel's lovely privates. Oh, it's all the same once you're inside them. Uh, get to the real goods. What of her arse, her hips, the view from behind. I can't wait any longer. Pleaded Sir Ben de Hover, or Benzer, as most call him by. A simple man, Benzer prefers taking his women from behind, holding hips and hair and tits as he happily thrusts away. He believes that whilst gazing upon a lady's backside, even the most homely of hoes can be made fair and beauteous. But of course, dear Benzer, where from behind was a true delight. So fine it felt, pressing inside her, the fold of her waist further increasing the tightness of her already narrow halls. Oh, and what a sight to behold! Out on her reputable father's balcony, under the light of the moon, with her dimples of Venus dancing in the faint torchlight from behind, her firm cheeks giving way to jiggle each time our hips did meet, as my hands gripped hers on the railing. Twas then that I spilt my first seed of the night. A memory I shall surely call upon in dark times, if ever the need should arise. Oh, what a dream! exclaimed Benzer. Songs to be sung by the sound of it. Songs to be sung! He was beside himself with admiration for Masculus's retelling, as it nearly placed him behind the young damsel just by the hearing of it. Pray tell me, good Masculus, wa was she grateful? Asked Sir Gregory comes a lot with pointed concern. His namesake bestowed upon his family generations ago through sheer merit. Sir comes a lot is known to reach fruition many times in a single encounter, surpassing even his family's ample reputation by literal heaps and mounds. I'm glad you asked, Sir Gregory, for she was as grateful as they come. Masculus replied in a solemn, reflective manner, and as he continued, a respectful hush swept over the hall. She was but a caged bird set free to open skies. 
so sweet a song she sang. As those virgin wings spread wide and took flight for their first time. Masculus stood tall and gestured towards the heavens above. Oh, and to have been her guide, to feel those tense, timid nerves melt and give way to such eager, ecstatic delight. I wish each and every one of you could have been there beside me to bear witness. His brothers all nodded their heads in unwavering solidarity, hanging upon Masculus's every word. Upon first entrance of mine glory into her pristine chalice, deep to its end, then pressed firmly deeper still until full to its very brink, her entire body began to rise into the air the two of us now moving together as one. It was then that I saw it in her eyes, as they began to tear with what could only have been pure gratitude and wonderment at the blessing bestowed within her. Twas truly a divine deed dutifully, dutifully delivered to a deserving damsel in distress. The seven holy deeds, one of the Brotherhood's most sacred omens. They finished it together in contemplative unison. Masculus spoke from a place of such deep honesty and clear nobility of purpose. His revelations profound, and for those wise enough to listen, transformative to the very core. A moment of pause came after he finished speaking, as a sense of hope for what miraculous beauty life could offer filled the air. I just don't get it. I mean, what good's a lass like her, eh? Putting an abrupt end to the serene silence was Barbara Bigbush, a longtime regular at the Old Cock Inn and familiar with all in earshot for most more times than they'd care to admit. Ain't got no experience moving her hips like me. Why, I know better than any maiden how to please a grown man in the sheets. Big Bush's best years were well behind her, and as any wench passed her prime, she'd naturally grown quick to envy. She'd sat through more than she could stomach hearing about this former maiden's tight, young body. Oh, Bob, don't you worry that big ol' hungry cunt of yours, said Sir Buster Hyman, who to this point in the night had remained silent. A true connoisseur at heart, Sir Hyman's tastes are particular exclusively to maidens, though often to his own detriment, as they are neither plentiful in numbers nor easily attainable. You're not luck to get passed by tonight, even if your twat's been run through by more lads than a target at the archery range. <laughs> He exclaimed with fervor as the entire hall erupted in laughter. Things devolved quickly from there, putting Masculus's grand tale of noble deeds to rest for the night. As the evening continued, the men began to roll dice for who would have first go with the present hose. The winners cheering their good fortunes and jesting at the losers, describing what state of mess they might leave the hose in before passing them along. Tempers rose hot at times, with wenches stepping in to assure that the more detestable of suggestions would surely not come to pass. The merriment would continue for a time, though it wasn't long before Masculus chose to retire from the festivities, which soon after his departure turned over to the expected sexual misdeeds and debauchery for most, and finally to sleep for all. That's it for this installment of The Tales of Masculus. Tune in next time to discover what adventures lie ahead. Will Masculus blossom more maidens, or will he bed any wanton hoes? 
Will he yet receive the former maiden Rayleigh Desprato's letter? All that and so much more when we return with The Tales of Masculus. In the meanwhile, do wise and noble deeds and spread word of the Masculus to friends and family alike. Just remember, these tales are not for children, and they are not for the faint of heart. Caution should be taken when sharing these tales with elders, for fear that their heads might surely explode. For these are tales for manly men, and women who wish for naught but to bathe in their presence. And of course, when the time comes, to make them sandwiches.